Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new video of F1 2020, my team. Today, the Austrian Grand Prix, but just like always, before we get into that, we have to um, go to our activities, but before we do that, today I want to show you guys this. Everything is spec one except marketing. This is looking pretty sick now, and um, which means that we might be able to get ourselves a new driver. Um, because this is the last race before um, Schumacher's contract runs out. And if I'm very honest with you, I want to get someone else. So that's why I really wasn't saving for him. I mean, I, I, Schumacher, you're a good guy, but um, I want someone else. A, a more cheap person. Because um, Schumacher is now asking $2 million. Uh, Well, at the start of... Um, Season 1, he only wanted 1 million, so he raised his base salary, so uh, he's gonna be <laughs> he's gonna be out of here. Well, unless his rating is, of course, 69. That would be super nice, but uh, I don't think it is. Anyways, it's now time for us to uh, fill in our activity guideline, uh, timeline, sorry, not guideline, timeline. I'm still gonna do it with um, weight training, because why not? And, um... Let's see what I'm going to upgrade now. Do I even have resource points to upgrade anything? Not sure. I want to upgrade the ECU because that would give us the best engine. I mean, that would be very nice, wouldn't it? Anyways, we'll just go to the Austrian Grand Prix. Let's fast forward in time. Then now it's time for the race weekend. Now, just like always, we're going to skip practice, and now we have a hell of a lot of points, and we are going to upgrade the ECU, because, um, it, yeah, it's going to be done before the Hungarian Grand Prix. Things are looking pretty good, only 20% fail chance. So let's hope that we're going to get the best engine out of all of them, with pistons and ECU upgrade at the same time. That should give us the best engine, unless Mercedes has a big upgrade as well. We'll have to wait, we'll have to wait. Now here we go for the Austrian Grand Prix qualifying one and my car is lovely on this track because we of course do have one of the best engines and since the biggest part of this entire um, circuit is just straight line we do have a high straight line speed and we accelerate quite quickly uh, so this lap went absolutely amazing. Uh, lap 1 actually didn't go that well since I uh, spun a bit, so that's why you see a 2 second difference between my first lap and my second lap. Schumacher is P90, um, and he didn't make him through. I'm P9 and I did make it through to Q2, which is of course absolutely awesome. Then now it's time for qualifying 2 and let's see what happens then. Right, qualifying 2, lap 1. Um, DRS enabled... Do I have anything to say anymore? No, I don't. <laughs> You're just gonna enjoy this uh, lap because it went absolutely flawless in my opinion. And um, I mean, just driving here, it, it, it always feels good because this is my favorite track. And um, I know the um, ideal lines here. Um, and that got us P3, qualifying two. P3, uh, Alexander Albon, P8, Vettel and uh, Bottas are going to start on the medium compound, which is very, very interesting. We're going to go for softs and probably a two-stop, but um, that all aside, going in for lap two, lap one wasn't flawless, lap two wasn't flawless either, but um, I think it was good enough since, I mean, I already made it through to Q3, so... I can't complain because usually I get uh, yeah kicked out in Q1 and now I made it uh, through Q2 as well and that gives us a final result of P7 which is absolutely amazing.
This is it then, race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix. The grandstands were a sea of red in 2019, thanks to the commemorative hats in honor of the late great Nicky Lauda, who took home victory, of course, back in 1984. And it's a sellout crowd once again here today. It's one of the shortest laps on the calendar today then, with seven rights and just three lefts, making up the 10 corners of this high-speed circuit. Turn two is barely a corner at all. They'll be flat out through there, a left-hand kink into the uphill braking zone of turn three. Turns one, three, and four are all potential opportunities to overtake. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. Can we talk about Mercedes? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Leclerc, Max Verstappen, and Albon. The owner driver, Stroll, Ocon, and Lando Norris. Ricardo, Perez, Carlos Sainz, and Raikkonen. Fiat, Gasly, George Russell, and Mick Schumacher. Rojan, Magnussen, Latifi, and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Alright Jeff, I'll try, I'll try, but uh, it won't be easy, I'll tell you that. We're going to go with the two stop soft, soft, medium. We're going to lower the fuel a bit, fuel amount, um, and we are looking pretty uh, set, so um, let's uh, do the race. But before we get into that, we have to do the formation lap, and you already know what I'm going to say now. I'm going to skip this because this is probably the most boring lap out of the entire race. So uh, we just arrived back at the grid. I accidentally overtook uh, Albon. <laughs> he was quite slow and I was... Uh... Yeah, I had a choice. Bump into him or uh, go past him. And I went for option two. So that's why I'm in front of Albon. But uh, that won't be for long since he's gonna line up in front of me. On the grid. And I am... The start sequence will begin as soon as the grid has formed. All right, Jeff. All right, Jeff. And I am absolutely happy with this because uh, P7 is, of course, amazing for my uh, my team. And having um, a top 10 finish is, of course, always good for points. But that all aside, it's lights out. And away we go. Off with a good start. We fly past Albon and Leclerc. Three wide with Verstappen and Vettel. As Vettel spun. Sebastian Vettel spun out. <coughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Holy crap. What happened there? Shut up, Jeff. I want to see what happened there. My start was absolutely amazing there. And Vettel spun out there since he thought there was space, but there wasn't space. Here from the onboard from um, Charles Leclerc. Sebastian Vettel there, He's, as you see me fly past there in the middle, and um, Vettel thought he could go in there three wide, but that wasn't possible, as we now see the replay from my teammate's perspective, Mick Schumacher. He had an okay start, I'd say, and um, the, entri the entire group got held up here. <laughs> as the um, McLaren started driving backwards into his front wing. Big rip for him. Safety car coming in at lap 3. And um, it's time for us to continue our race. And I, I'm not thinking about overtaking Hamilton or Bottas. I'm thinking about defending from um, Verstappen. Because this is the Red Bull ring. And this is uh, Max Verstappen's best Grand Prix. It's not his home Grand Prix because that's of course Zandvoort. But this is by far his best Grand Prix. Um, 
circuit. So let's see if we can uh, keep the beast behind us and uh, how far we'll get. I mean, it's lap four now, and um, Sergio Perez is out of the session. All right, what happened to uh, what happened to him? All right, he was just driving there, and his engine just gave up. Well, that sucks. That gives me a deja vu of um, my teammate Mick Schumacher, who also um, left the Grand Prix from Canada. As we now have freaking no. We have Verstappen around the outside as we try to dive bomb him again around the inside. And do we manage to maintain our position? Yes, we do. All right. So uh, it was tight, but we did manage to get through there. P3 still. As we now see Verstappen approaching us around the inside. And I'm going to leave him some space here as he still bumps into me. My rear end... Um, started uh, flying a bit. I'm getting a warning for some reason, even though I left space and Verstappen is the one causing this accident. Ricardo at the right side of Verstappen going three wide into turn three and I managed to get out of there as P3 and not as P5 uh, and not as P5 luckily. Jeff wants me to pay in this lap so we're gonna do that of course for a new set of softs. I see that Verstappen and Ricardo are still going. And um, let's see what place will be. What our position will be once we leave the pit lane. Leclerc is now in the pits. And he is there. Does uh, Leclerc need a new front wing or something? Because he's there for a long, long time. That's weird. I want to see a replay from uh, Leclerc's perspective, since he was a very long time in that pits. And it looks like he had a penalty, a 5 second penalty. And that sucks. That definitely sucks, having a 5 second penalty. He was right behind me and now he's gone. And now we catch up to the entire group here. <laughs> Around the inside of Pierre Gasly. And we are up to P16. And we are just going to keep on pushing as we go up to P11 because there are a lot of people in the pit lane. We overtake Vettel there. We're going side to side with him here. But I don't think he is able to uh, get in front of us. We're just faster than him here. And we are up to P10 as we jump around the inside of both Giovinazzi and Magnussen into turn 3. That was, uh, <laughs> that was huge. I didn't expect that to happen. I see a few people in pits again. That gives us P6 going around the outside of Daniel Kivia, and we are up to P5. Next up on our list is going to be Lando Norris. And um, let's see if we can overtake that guy because that would be uh, awesome, of course, if we could do that. Around the inside, and it's not enough. We're still behind him. We're going to use DRS and Slipstream to get past this guy. Because um, he is annoying, not going to lie. Uh, he tries to defend the inside. Isn't enough though. I do manage to get past him. P4 for us. Absolutely fantastic. As we see Carlos Sainz going into the pits. And that gives us P3. I'm going to try to stretch out my tires for one more lap. So I'm not going in... At the end of lap 21, I'm gonna I'm going in at the end of lap 22 here, so I can just um, try to do a bit of an overcut as we see uh, Verstappen fly past me, and I'm hoping that he's going for a two-stop, soft, medium, soft, because otherwise I'm probably not gonna overtake him anymore. Leclerc in the pits as well, and we are down to P7. Alright, is Albon going to overtake us here at the pit exit? No, he won't. So we're up to P7. As we're going to try to overtake Stroll here on this straight. We're going to use DRS and Slipstream to slingshot ourselves away up. As we dive bomb the inside. And we are up to P6. We don't have to do any more pit stops. 
I hope they do. But uh, even if they don't, I have fresher tires, so um, I should be able to catch up to Ricardo and Sainz here. As there is a yellow flag. I think that's Alexander Albon, because uh, Verstappen is in front of me, and there is a Red Bull behind me with issues. Uh, we're going to wait for the stewards to say, some, uh, to say something about it. There you go. Yeah, it is Alexander Albon, so we're going to see a replay here of him. He's driving on the hard compound, so he probably went for a soft to hard one stop. And um, I don't see smoke. But I do see that he is slowing down a lot. So, um, that could mean that he has some damaged components in the car. That is a big rip for Alexander Albon. But um, it is good news for my teammate Mick Schumacher, of course, which, uh, who can move up a place. As we go around the inside of Ricardo and we overtake him successfully... And now we're gonna be <laughs> now we're gonna be fighting Carlos Sainz. And if I'm very honest with you, it did take me uh, a lot of time, and I do I did have to struggle a lot. It took me a hell of a lot of laps to catch up to this guy. And we have DRS on him now. We're gonna use the uh, the slipstream as well, dive bombing around the inside if possible. Yes, we can dive bomb the inside, and we are past him. We are up to P4 here, past Carlos Sainz with no further pit stops on fresher tyres. So we are going to be P4 and hopefully even P3 if one of the uh, if one of the cars ahead of us gets some uh, damage. We'll be able to get another podium just like on Baku. You're going to see every possible replay because damn I'm happy with this overtake on Carlos Sainz. Around the inside into turn 3. All right, Lewis Hamilton, congratulations on the race win. And um, we're going to cross the line as P4, which is absolutely fantastic. Leclerc overtook uh, Sainz here. And the question is, is he going to catch up to us? Since, I mean, he is in a Ferrari. He is trying to push everything he has in the car now to overtake us. But I don't think it's going to be enough since we're going into the last corner right now. And there is no way that he's going to overtake us on the straight. Ladies and gentlemen, we are P4 in the Austrian Grand Prix. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Austria. And a truly magnificent drive to hang on and take the win. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team. And they certainly deserve it. Let's see how the driver standings have changed. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Roman Grosjean's my driver of the day. I don't think I've ever seen such a strong performance from him. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, good work from the owner driver's team this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Well, I'm so I'm so ecstatic about this. P freaking four. We move up in the constructors a bit. We move up in the driver standings above Alexander Albon, who had to quit the session. And now it's time to make ourselves ready for the press. Sure. That's going to be uh, horsepower. We just have one of the strongest engines. Uh, there's no secrets. 
It's all about having a great team and car. It was more like Dodgems than Formula One today, wasn't it? Um I think I'm going with um you're right. It was like a fair clown a uh, fair ground with all those clowns. I mean, I, I don't know, it's, it's just funny to, uh, to see that one. Appreciate your time. Yeah, no worries. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed watching to today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video of F1 2020, my team.